with you. We are your servant, they said to Joshua. But Joshua asked, who are you and where do you come from? They answered, your servants have come from a very distant country because of the fame of the Lord your God. For we have heard reports of him, all that he did in Egypt and all that he did to the, to the two kings of the Amorites, east of the Jordan, Sihon king of Heshbon and Og king of Bashan, who reigned in Ashtaroth, and our, and our elder and all those living in our country said to us, take provision for the journey. Go and meet them and, and say to them, we are your servant. Make a treaty with us. This bread of ours was worn when we packed it at home on the day we left to come to you. But now see how dry and moldy it is. And these wines came that we filled were new, but see how cracked they are. And our clothes and sandals are worn, are worn out by the very long journey. The Israelites sampled their provisions, but did not inquire of the Lord. If the Bible is yours, just underline, did not inquire. That is what we're going to talk about today. Did not inquire of the Lord. Then Joshua made a treaty of peace with them to let them leave. And the leaders of the assembly ratified it by oath. Sixteen, three days after they made the treaty with the Gibeonites, the Israelites heard that they were neighbors living near them. So the Israelites set out and on the third day came to their cities, Gibeon, Kephira, and Beeroth, and Kiriath, Jerim. But the Israelites did not attack them because the leaders of the assembly had sworn an oath to them by the Lord, the God of Israel. The whole assembly grumbled against the leaders, but all the leaders answered, We have given them our oath by the Lord. And the God of Israel. And we cannot touch them now. This is what we will do to them. We will let them leave. So that, the God's, so that God's wrath will not fall on us. For breaking the oath we swore to them. 21. They continued. Let them leave. But let them be wood cutters and water carriers. In the service of the whole assembly. So the leaders promise to them was kept. Then Joshua summoned Gibeonite and said, why did you deceive us by saying we live a long way from you while actually you live near us? You are now under a curse. You will never be released from the service as woodcutters and water carriers for the house of the Lord. 24, they answered Joshua, your servant were clearly told how the Lord your God had commanded the servant Moses to give you the whole land and to wipe out all its inhabitants from before you. So we feared for our lives because, because of you and that is why we did this. We are now in your hands. Do to us whatever seems God, whatever seems good. And write to you. 26. So Joshua saved them from the Israelites and they did not kill them. 27. That day he made the Gibeonite woodcutters and water carriers for the assembly to provide for the need of the altar of the Lord at the place the Lord would choose. And that is what they are to this day. Amen. Amen. Do we really understand this? Does it really make sense? Are we all here? This is 
one thing I loved about God. When God be for us, when God be for us, when God be for us, no man, no matter what we're going to go through, he will, we will come out victorious. Hallelujah. We're talking about the people of Israel being led by Joshua. Joshua had to take the place of Moses. And it's not easy because Joshua was not living holy people was not living righteous or perfect people. These are people who really provoke Moses so much that he lost his temper. These are very rude, disobedient, arrogant. You give it all kind of acronyms. They will fit in. They're very hardened hearted. They saw all the miracles from God and yet they disobeyed him. God will perform. The, they were using God like a magician. God, we want this. Then God will provide. God, we want that. God, we want this. We want manna. Look, they were fed by God. They were fed by God. God was so real to them. They will wake up. Their breakfast is ready for them. When it's day, even when they were walking and it's night, God can just, for their sake, provide light for them to guide them. They, saw, they, were, they had evidence clear, real evidence of what the hand of God can do. They saw the Red Sea being parted into two. God made the Red Sea dry land. They walked through seamlessly without, without any problem. They saw the handiwork of God. They saw the miracles. They saw their enemies coming closer where right in front of them. They had a Red Sea where on their left and right they had no way to escape. They saw the, their enemies coming, chariots of war. And God brought a pillar. Some way, somehow, to segregate, to separate them from being attacked by their enemy. They saw all the signs and wonders. They knew what their God can do. There was no room. There was, in fact, there was no altar of death whatsoever. And yet the Bible is telling us here that when they got to a point where they had conquered Jericho, where they had conquered all the people or the land that the people who were occupant of the land God had given them. God gave them the power to overcome them. But the, their enemies actually witnessed Jericho being conquered. All the nations around them. So every nation they attack. So they knew how powerful and mighty. They knew it wasn't their strength. They were, they were, they were being empowered by some, some spiritual being, superpower. It wasn't a human, but supernatural power. They, their enemies knew that. So when their enemies, the Bible is talking about six nations who had borne witness to what the God of Joshua can do, heard that they were next to be attacked. One of them decided, the Gibeon, I decided, Look, as for us, we cannot go and fight this nation. We can't. The Hittite, the, the Zarabites, the let me just try and bring out the key names that they've got down here. So the Bible is saying the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hevites, the Jesuits. Hallelujah. These were the six nations that God has commanded Joshua to go and possess their land. And they knew their land were going to possess. And the thing is, I want to tell you that, you see, God has told them, go and possess the land. You would expect that the land would be vacant for them to go and possess it, right? But there were people living there. And the Bible says these people were stronger and mighty in structure from every fiscal facet. You want to take it? They were greater than them. But then that's the lesson I want us to take here. God will bring you the blessing, but the blessing has a burden attached. It will not come. It will not come with no burden. Look at anyone in the Bible God has blessed and there was no problem attached or burden attached. Look at Mary. The angel said, you are highly favored. 
Blessed among all the women. You are going to be born with a savior who will save the whole world. This is somebody preparing for her wedding. And in those times, you know, wedding was something that was, was, was accorded with all the dignity and the respect. So you could just imagine the expectation. And yet, that message messed up her wedding. That message from the angel caused her husband to find an alternative way to divorce her. How can you carry a baby when you have seen no man? And who would even believe you? And yet, you're going to be the mother of the savior of the whole world. Hallelujah. Who else? Joseph. Look at what God had prepared ahead of him. Why would he have to go through all these to be, to be betrayed by his brothers, put in a pit, be sold into slavery, go into prison, just to become a prime minister? So the blessing was there, but the blessing carried a burden. Look, we can go through every single individual that God used smiley and blessed. But brethren, don't think when you become a Christian, it's going to go smoothly. Sometimes you're waking up to come to church will be a disaster. Will be, you won't feel that the zeal to even come and have fellowship with the brethren. You won't. But that blessing is coming with a burden. But God knows you can't withstand that. God knows you can't withstand. There is no blessing that God gives us that does not supersede the burden that is attached to it. Look, if you think you've got a blessing with no burden, then I can guarantee that it's not coming from God. I'm telling you. There is no shortcut in it. There is no shortcut. There is nobody sitting here who hasn't got a burden. But I can tell you, everyone here is blessed. Everyone here is blessed. Everyone here is blessed. Beyond the natural. Beyond what you can see. If God has given you, you can see. If you know who is sitting next to you, you will be afraid. If you know what God has prepared for the champions among us, you will be afraid. And be very careful how you, you treat each other. Hallelujah. So, these people need all the signs, the wonders, the miracles, all, all the good things that God has used them to accomplish. And the Bible said, Gibeonites, they were very smart. They said, hey, we cannot fight Israel. We cannot fight Joshua and his crews. So, the rest of the six nations, in fact, the, the, the remaining five nations, they all came together. To look, let's put our might, our ammunition is together and conquer. That's the only way we can defeat the people of Israel. The only way is for all these nations to come together as one, use all the armies we have to overcome them. And the Bible says they agreed, but one nation called Gibeonite refused. That is not the point I'm going to, I, I want us to dwell on. The point I want us to dwell on is the deceptive nature or the people of Gibe uh, the Gibeon. So the people of Gibeon, they came. So they, they, in fact, they walked out of that joint effort to overcome the people of Israel. You see, the enemy knows your capability. Why would nations come together to fight the people of, of Israel? Why? It's just one nation. In fact, we can't even accord them as a nation. They weren't even, their number was no near a number that you can actually accord that name nation. And yet, because the hand of the Lord is upon them, hallelujah. Even their enemies, their environment, wherever they pass, they can hear them. They can hear the sound of mighty warriors approaching. The enemy knows what is inside of you. That is why you're going through what you're going through. The enemy knows exactly what you're going to become. That is why he will give you no rest until you give up in your service to God. The enemy knows your capability, your skills. Look, you are unique. You are special. God has made you and you are here for a reason. You're not here to add up to the number. God created you in his own image. You have God inside of you. In fact, the parents that you were born to were given to you according to the plan of God. You're not here or you're not given by your parents by mistake. That is how, that is who you are in Christ. You are powerful. There is nothing you cannot do. And that's what God confirmed that in Luke 1.37. That with God, 
all things are possible. Let me try and streamline this quickly because of our time. Brethren, the Gibeonite exempted themselves. And you know what? They came with deception. They were neighbors. And yet, they came wearing worn sandals, molded bread, carrying you know, uh, wine that, 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 that was cracked. Oh, that you cannot even think that you might think when you, once you set eye all what you can perceive or conclude is that these people have indeed been traveling from very far. And they came saying, oh, we have heard about all the wondrous work that your God has done. So we have come here to become your slave. We are not here to fight with you. We are here to serve you. Brethren, let's watch out for the people that come our way. The message is about deception. I don't care whether it's in the church or whether it's in, at your workplaces, whether it's your neighbor, but there's a lot of deception the enemy is using to steal the children and the, the people of God. The Bible says the enemy comes to steal. He's a deceptive right from the beginning. He's full of lies. Lies is mother tongue. You can't, you, you can't boast or tell that the enemy is a liar. It's, we'll say a tautology. That, that, that is what he does anyway. It, it, it's repetitive. You're wasting time when you say the enemy is a liar. That, that is his nature. You can't change it. But the Bible says they were able to convince Joshua and his leaders that we don't belong here. We just come to seek refuge from you. So have mercy. And what did they do? They believe. They believe what they were told. They did not consult their maker. They, they, they totally neglected that their star where God had brought them was not by their own might. They used their experience to judge. Oh yes, that's a really molded bread. That's a wine skin that have been there for years. That means these people have been traveling for, for years, so they don't even live here. So why don't we accept them? Baron, every time you compromise on our stand and not seek the face of God to make decisions, we make mistakes. It may be comfortable at the time, but at the expense of a greater tomorrow. Watch out for deceptive. Watch out for deceptive. Watch out for people who will compromise the word of God to bring out only what you want to hear at the expense of securing your stand for eternity. Eternity is real. We're not going to be here forever. Hey, I always say, thankfully, my granddad, my grandma, they're still there. They are waiting to get their visa to leave here. In fact, they even had enough. Now you talk to them, they don't even know what you're talking about, to be honest with you. My granddad is, I think, around 103. My grandmom is 102. They just, they dress them up, they come and sit there, and you, ask, you talk to them. They will smile, but they don't even know what you're talking about. And they change the conversation altogether. So now, it's like they're beginning life again. They're talking like kids. They're restarting life again. So you can be so much blessed, but sometimes you can even, you wonder whether you're supposed to be here or not. But the point I'm trying to make is, brethren, hold fast to what you have. Don't neglect God in all your endeavors. Look, the truth is in the word of God. Success is in it. Success is in it. What the enemy is afraid, is not your mere words you're talking about. What the enemy is, is afraid is not you coming to church. What the enemy is afraid is not you singing praises. What the enemy is afraid is you standing on the word of God, declaring. Look, I always say to my family, immediate family, I'm talking about my wife and children, when you pray, that look, even if Christ Jesus, the son of God, the one who was present right through creation, I love you, my boy. Come and let's pray together. Look, even if, even if the Son of God, Jesus Christ, 
had to make reference to the word of God when he was being tempted. How much more you and I? Oh, what the enemy is afraid is the word. There is power and authority. The Bible says he did not create the world out of nothing, but out of his word. So when you speak the word of God, something must happen. Why would Joshua not confront or not consult God, not seek the face of God before the next level God was going to advance? Why? Why would Joshua? Have we had a time in our life where we have to make difficult decisions, but we just made it out of experience? We didn't even think through. We just made it anyhow without even referencing it to God, the maker. Without even, without even consulting our God who has brought us this far. Have we gotten to a level where we think it's all by our experience? We know it all. We know it all. I'm admonishing you, church. I'm admonishing us, including myself. God has not finished with that yet. I always say, even if it's five people or two people who will come to church, and can worship God for who he is and know why they are doing it, I'm happy than to have the whole house full of people and not knowing what they are doing. They become religious. It's just not, you don't come to church because your mom comes to church or your dad comes to church. If you don't come to church, they'll be upset with you. So you have to just add to the number. No. But those who know their God, hey, those who know their God, those who know their God, no matter what, you can't stay at home on Sunday. Hey. You can't stay. You, 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 you can't do that. You, it is not part of your DNA. You can't do that. Because you, you are God. There's some God in you. That need to be connected with fellow brethren. That together we can serve our maker. There is nothing our God cannot do. I'm telling you. Our God is more than able to accomplish whatever. To cut a long story short. Read on when you get home. The Bible says, because they, they swore an oath, they could not retake that. They had to live with that pain. And the mess they had to go through is as a result of they not consulting God. As a result of compromising the stand. As a result of refusing to seek the face of God. When they had saw the face of God through all the advances and through all the victory God gave them. What are you going through in life that you think you've gotten to a point where you can do it or God stay aside, I will sort it out myself. Is that the level you got into? That God, I tell you, you're taking so long to fulfill this. There is a way out. I want to, I want to sort it out myself. Look, when, when you want to do it, you do it. But for now, I can't wait. I, I want to deal with it myself because you're taking too long. Hey, in God's old time, he makes all things beautiful. It may be painful. It may be difficult. It may be hurting. Sometimes it's not even what we expect. Sometimes it's not even what we expect. We want A and God give us B. We prayed for this. You want promotion. You get a promotion and now you see you encountering some different levels of challenges you've never experienced before. You wish, you see, before you had a promotion, you were very comfortable. We can deal with the things comfortably without consulting anybody. Now, people are coming to you left, right, center. People who can be your grandparents, they are coming to you for advice. You feel like just burying yourself. But you ask. So, the blessings is now coming with what? With a burden. But, you see, there is one amazing thing about God that every time he blesses us, he brings with it it complementary enablement for you to overcome the challenge that the enemy can bring your way. There is nothing you're going through that God has not given you a key to unlock it. All he's waiting for is for you to consult him. All he's waiting for it's for you to be aware that he is the altar and not just the altar but the finisher of your faith. He who has started with us will bring it to an expected end. So I'm challenging you brethren. Difficult times will come. A real time to test your faith in him will come. 
But the only one, the only way to succeed and to be victorious is to remain connected to him. Just say to a friend or someone sitting next to you, remain connected to him. Please say like you mean it, remain connected to him. That is the only source of victory. Look, God, it, it's baffling how he does the thing. Sometimes it does not even make sense. It doesn't even make sense. You have people who are so rich beyond description. Yeah? And yet, they don't even know what they have to use their money for. They've now resorted into using their money to bless those who are neglected. Why can Bill Gates travel all the way to Africa? Pure villages who haven't even got water. He's using all his resources to fight against malaria, polio. Why would people do that? Because it boils down to the love of God. If you've got the love of God in you, it transcends beyond all understanding. You can live beyond, beyond any challenge the enemy will bring your way. If only, if and only if only, you want to remain connected to God. Remain connected to God. He will give you exposition over every deceptive... Look, the enemy will not come. That, look, you see, I always say, if you fight it with somebody and you can see the person, at least when he's punching a blow, you can dodge. But the thing is, when you call yourself that Christian and you start wearing that Christ-like garment, even when you utter a word, people will start, ah, but he calls himself a Christian. The day, so when you're wearing a Christian, oh, it was alright, you can say whatever I want to say, yeah? But the moment you call yourself a Christian, know that now you, you're on a battlefield. This is a battle you cannot see with your naked eyes. If God should open your eyes to see the angels protecting you everywhere you go, you know how you have to pamper this God. If you know how God really pampers you on a daily basis, in the night, in the night, you think you got a fence around your house. So nobody can come in there. <laughs> if God opened our eyes, the eyes beyond, just like he opened the eyes of um, um, Elisha's servant. If God opened our eyes just one moment, all the problem you see, you laugh at them. Sometimes I look back at some of the things I call challenges in the past. I look at them and I laughed. I thought they were so threatened and so fearful. I thought I was even going to die. I look at them now and I laugh. I did not have, I was in my old brain. I did not have the experience to deal with it. So God will, will bring you up gradually until you mature to that level where you can withstand. I don't even realize it's two o'clock. You see, the word of God is so sweet. I wish you have time. Please come to church early. Let's spend time to study the word of God. There are so many things there. Look, there's so many lovely, interesting things there that will make you so successful beyond what you can think. Look, if you want peace of mind, you can't get it by having possessions. The prince of peace is here. He's the word of God. The word is Christ himself. You, see, you can have everything you want to have, but without Christ, you're of all men the most miserable. Cling to what you have. Hold on to the God you serve. Do what you do for God as if you're doing it for him, not as if you're doing it for me or anybody. No, not even for your pastor. Don't let anybody become a hindrance to your service to God. Because one day, you and I, not as a group, not as Jubilee, you are going to be accountable for what you use your life here on earth for. And that is going to determine you're going to heaven or hell. It is real. That's the bottom point of my message. It is real. Heaven is real. Hello? Heaven is real. Hell is real. Where would you be? It's all dependent on how you live your life here on earth. Relationship comes in two ways. Relationship comes in two ways. You can't claim to serve God and not make time for God. You can't join us to pray. You can't be in the fellowship. You comfortable being on your own. You, somebody was a blessing to you. You watch his or her life. You've now matured to the stand you are. And you think it's okay to be on your own. You don't think people are watching you and, and craving that your lifestyle and, and your admira a, 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 admiration can empower them to become or to go beyond where you have attained. 
The challenge is on us, brethren. Relationship come with an effort. Christ made the effort to come down. I can't tell you how far he had to travel to come down, but it was long enough for him to come down. He did not care about the distance. He chose to come to die for you and I. All I'm asking you is, whatever you're doing for God, do it with the best of your heart. We don't know when he's going to call us, but I want you to have a proper accountability on that day. Consult God in all that comes your way. And I can guarantee you will never go wrong. Those who consult God in their dealings, they are victorious and their victory comes with lasting success. There is no shortcut. If you ask Sarah, Abraham's wife, he'll tell you that he tried to help God and in the end, his blessing mocked at her own miracle. When the promised son came, you know, uh, what's his name? Ishmael <laughs> had to mock at her own miracle for Isaac. So I'm asking you, God will never leave you or forsake you. He is with you till the end of time. Make time for the things of God. Make time for God and he will never, he will never leave you. And he will expose every deception. Look, do you think if Joshua had gone to God to pray that look, thank you for all the evidence you've given us. We're going to seek the face of our God and we'll give you a response. What do you think the answer would have been? Mommy Monica, help me. <laughs> I'm saying God would have told them that uh, Gibeonites were lying. You see? If you consult God, hey, he will give you the answer. Because he has already proven blueprint evidence that he was with them. And yet, they relied on the experience only to find out that they have been deceived. I pray that we will not be deceived by every wolf that will come like a sheep to deceive us, twisting the word of God, to take us from his presence, thinking that what we have is enough. There is no need to pursue and seek the face of God or consult him. May the God of, of, of heaven expose that person. Anyone that will come your way at work, in church, at home, neighborhood, everywhere you go, may the presence of God expose every deceptive spirit that the enemy will bring your way. That you know who you are in Christ. You will stand firm and declare the wondrous work of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With our eyes closed.